I want you this day to reset your thinking. Turn to the person next to you and say, reset your thinking. Reset your thinking. You know, I was always a guy that had all these, every year needs to have a theme because we want something new in our lives. But what God actually wants to do is let there be a continuation of His goodness and His mercy in our lives. So I want to challenge you today. Instead of setting goals, why don't you become the goal? Instead of setting goals, why don't you become the goal? Success is not measured by what we accomplish, but who you will become in 2024. Can I have one amen? Turn to the person next to you say, reset your thinking. God dropped something in my heart when I was reading Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 4, verse 9 and 10. And many of you know the prayer of Jabez. The Bible says Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. And he called upon the God of Israel and he said that you indeed would bless me, that you would enlarge my territory, that you would be with me, that you would keep evil away from me and that I would not cause pain. And God granted him his petition. So I want us to just reset our thinking. And as I was reading this, the Lord just showed me the first thing Jabez did. He reached up to God. He reached higher. The second thing, he reached inwardly. And lastly, he said, enlarge my territory outwardly. And God just dropped this in my heart for 2024 to go higher, deeper, and wider. Are you ready? Are you ready? Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And as I read this story about Jabez, it's this genealogy that's written there. And you read, this one begot this one begot this one. And then suddenly you see, Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. If Jabez was more honorable, it means he demonstrated faith that honored God. Because the only thing that pleases God is faith. So can we read 1 Chronicles 4 verse 9. Just go with me in your Bibles to that. The New King James. I've quoted it, but let me read it to you. It says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, and that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. The New American Standard Bible says, He also called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would indeed bless me, Indeed, and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, that it may that it may not pain me. He said, Keep me from harm that it not pain me. The new King James says that I may not cause pain. Now I want you just to think about this for one minute. The day Jabez was born, he caused so much pain that his mother called him he who causes pain. The day he was born, his situation and circumstances labeled him as one who causes pain. I know this is talking to many of you because your situations and circumstances has labeled you. Many of you are called things by people and you had no control over it. Am I talking to the right people here this morning? Jabez caused so much pain that they called him he who causes pain. Can you imagine going into this world being called he who causes pain? Mommy, can I invite he who causes pain just to come and play at Saturday? Are you crazy? Don't you think we have enough problems in this house? Now you want to invite he who causes pain into our home? Am I talking to the right people here? 
situation and circumstances labeled him as one who causes pain. Can I tell you something? The pain of the past or those who caused pain in your life in the past do not hold your future in his hands. Jesus holds your future in his hands. The first thing Jabez did, and maybe growing up as a little boy, he realized this is my name. This is how I got my name. But the Bible says he was more honorable because what he did is he called upon the God of Israel. Who do you call first upon when there's a challenge, when there's a difficulty? He reached up. And it teaches us how important it is to call out to God. In whatever situation you are facing, call to God. Turn to the person next to you and say, firstly, reach up. So this teaches us in our journey. Even when we've been labeled things, we've been called things, we can call upon God and God will change our situation, our circumstances. Amen? Jabez knew that he had to link up with God. It doesn't matter what people have called you in the natural. In the realm of victory in Christ Jesus, there's victory for us. And he knew he had to link up with God. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So the first place where we should prosper is in our spiritual walk with God, our relationship with God. When you are linked up with God and you start to prosper in the spirit, all the other things will fall into place. Amen? It's about giving honor to God. The Bible says Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. Do you know what that means? It means he brought honor to the name of Jesus. He didn't look at his situation and circumstances, but he said, I am going to call upon the God of Israel. You might be calling me pain, but I'm not going to cause pain. And he started to worship God. He started to honor God. He started to magnify God. Now suddenly he who causes pain is walking around causing joy, glorifying the name of Jesus. Am I talking to the right people here? What if people labeled you that you've used as an excuse not to do what God has planned for you? John 4 teaches us that those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's not what you've heard here in this world, but what is the spirit saying? What is heaven saying about your situation and your circumstances? Can I just say something? Don't accept your situation and your circumstances as final. Heaven still has an opinion about you. People might have labeled you Jabez, he who causes pain. But God says, I've got a plan for you. They may call you pain, but I'm going to use you as an instrument of joy, an instrument of happiness, so that my name can be glorified and magnified in you and through you. Am I talking to the right people here today? Turn to the person next to you and say, get ready for 2024. He didn't just accept his situation and circumstances, but he knew that all things were possible with God. Faith is not for the possible. Faith is for the impossible. Faith is for the impossible. When things seem impossible, God is ready to change it. Amen? The Bible says in the book of Philippians, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Just think for one minute. Here you are called, he who causes pain. It's very easy to be anxious. You can just walk into a room and they can think, just stay away from him. He's going to cause pain. But the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. There's a spiritual mysticism that's crept into the church where people think they don't have to make their request known to God. They don't have to ask God for anything. But Jabez with boldness came to God and he said, God, bless me. Enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me. Keep evil away from me and help me not to cause pain. And God granted him his petition. The book of James says we do not have 
because we do not ask. Sometimes we don't want to ask God, help me not to cause pain because we've been labeled as one who causes pain. Let me just rephrase it. People have said this family has always been poor and now you think you have to accept that you have to be poor. They're always sick. This family always dies of this disease. So now I'm also going to die of that disease. Am I talking to the right people here? Turn to the person next to you and say, reset your mind. Turn to the person on the other side and say, reset your thinking. Family, it doesn't matter what you've been labeled when you call upon the God of Israel, the living Jesus. He can change your situation and your circumstances. Amen. John 14 verse 12 says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Verse 13, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What is the greater works that we can do in 2024? According to this scripture, it's pray. It's praying and asking God for those things. One of the greatest ways that you can demonstrate your love towards a brother is to pray for them. Jesus is praying for you right now because he loves you. He was praying for Peter when his faith wanted to fail. There's no greater way of expressing your love, a greater work than to take a friend and bring him before God and pray for him. Amen? Jabez understood that God's will and God's plans superseded his situation and circumstances. Can I have one amen? Your situation and circumstances, God's will supersedes that. So if God knows everything, and if the will of God is to bless Jabez, if that was heaven's plan right from the beginning, why pray? If you know the will of God is to open the door, why then pray for the door to be opened, if he's going to open the door? Am I talking to the right people here? Can I tell you why? Because of covenant, because of the relationship. Deuteronomy 8:18, he says, don't think it's because what you've done, but it's God who gives you the ability, the strength, the anointing, the grace to be successful so that he can establish the covenant between you and him. It's about a relationship. This is why Matthew says, when you come knocking, he will open. Amen. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find knock and it will be open to you. This is what Jabez did. He came and he knocked. God, they call me Jabez. I'm doomed, Lord. My family says I've caused pain from birth. Everybody thinks I'm going to cause pain. I'm coming to you in faith, knocking. I know you're a righteous God. Bless me, God. Enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me. Keep evil away from me and help me not to cause pain. And the Bible says God granted him his petition. Jabez's prayer was a reflection of his desire to reach deeper into a relationship with God and to reach further in his life's purpose to touch and change other people's lives not just all about him. Are you ready to reach higher? Turn to the person next to you, say in 2024, reach higher, reach higher. Amen. The second thing that Jabez said, he said, bless me. When we talk about bless me, it was not a selfish prayer, but he was looking inwardly. It was a self-reflection taking place in his life. Amen. It was a yearning for a deeper connection with God. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 5, it says, God blesses the pure in heart. 
So when we talk about blessing, we're talking about the purity of heart. Amen? Because blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. If you want to see the hand of God in your life, purity of heart. Amen? This prayer challenges us to look deeper. When you look deeper, you're going to have to confront some things going on in your heart. Fears about 2024. Insecurities about 2023. Hurts of 2023. Offenses of 2023. Disappointments of 2023. Because those weights, those disappointments, you cannot carry them into 2024. It will be too much. Because God wants to use you to run for him, to be a blessing to those around you. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm ready to let go of every hurt, every offense, every disappointment of 2023. So that I can enter into 2024 with a pure heart. This means it's a willingness to change, willingness to grow, willingness to walk with God. Jabez, when he started out, he called upon the God of Israel. And the Bible says, ask and it will be given to you. Whatever you ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that I will do. Praise and supplication and thanksgiving. It's one level of prayer. But here when you start facing fears, facing some mountains, am I talking to the right people here? You need to take your faith and your prayer life to a new level. Quickly go to Mark 11. Let me just show you something quickly there. Am I helping some of you? It's not all these goals, but we're going to change. Amen? Look at Mark 11. I'm reading from the New King James, verse 23. For assuredly I say to whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Here Jesus is talking about a different kind of prayer. Amen. He's not saying, ask the Father in Jesus' name, but he's saying, exercise the authority that I've given you, and you speak to that mountain and say, go. It's different. It's not, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, remove the mountain. No, no, no. If you want to be an overcomer, change to take place. The authority that Christ has given you, the authority that was given to Jesus, he has given that to us. The glory that the Father gave him, he has given that to us. And he says here specifically that you can see, verse 23, he says, you speak to the mountain. You tell it to go. You tell that mountain to move. He says, when you do that and you pray, did you see that? It's another form of pray, praying when you start to exercise the authority that God has given you. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm going to speak to some mountains with the authority that Christ has given me. Family, let me tell you something. Faith has got an attitude. Like fear has got an attitude to come against you, to cripple you, to paralyze you, to cause you not to move. Faith has got an attitude. Jabez came with faith and a confidence speaking to the mountains say I'm not going to cause pain when he started walking into a room even though his name was Jabez they know he is coming hope he is coming joy he is coming peace because he walked with a different kind of attitude amen his prayer was not one for selfish reasons but his prayer was one to help others amen Jabez challenges us to reach further challenges us to reach further that was the third thing that he said. He said, Lord, enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. The New American Standard, the NASB says, increase my borders. Increase my borders. Isaiah 
records in Isaiah 54 verse 2, he says, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Jabez said, Enlarge my borders. Isaiah said, Stretch me. Increase. JB's spread challenges all of us to reach further, to serve more, to help more, to pray more, to give more, to encourage more. Jesus said, go into the world. So you can see Jabez had this attitude. Number one, I'm relying on God, called upon God, up, then in, then out. That's the natural thing that's going to happen. We are not called to live self-contained lives. It's not just about you. You are blessed to be a blessing. Turn to the person next to you and say, you are saved to save others. You are blessed to be a blessing. Our territory, like Jabez, can enlarge. Have you gone knocking and asking God, enlarge my territory? Help me to influence more, to touch more lives. Are you ready for 2024? As we reflect upon this prayer of Jabez, I'm closing. It's about reaching higher in our relationship with God, going deeper and going wider. I'm thinking about that song, higher, higher, amen, and wider, wider. I'm not going to sing it. Amen. Let us see who we can become in 2024. Let us allow the Spirit of God to work in us, with us, and through us to do greater things, to reach higher, go deeper. We need to dig deeper. Family, listen to me. We need a church that's deep in a world that's shallow. A shallow world needs a deep church so that they can see a more excellent way, so that they can see the Jesus way. As I was reading this week in the book of Kings, the Shunammite, the Bible says she perceived that this was a holy man. Let people perceive that we've been reaching out, touching God. In the book of Acts 4, they said, They perceived that these disciples had spent time with Jesus. Let people see and perceive there's something different about us. That we've connected with God, that we've reached higher, touched with God. Let them see that we've been reaching deeper. That we're working on our hearts to walk in humility and sincerity of heart. That we're working on humble hearts, sincere hearts. Hearts that will not be grudges, but hearts that are quick to forgive. A heart that will love. And let them see that we are reaching further, going beyond ourselves. Amen. Loving our neighbor like we love ourselves and knowing that our neighbor can be anybody. Our neighbor can be from a different culture, a different religion. And show them that Jesus love. I'm leaving you with this. In 2024, may you go higher, deeper, and wider. In Jesus' name, see you love.